Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, this is no joke training. This is really serious. We're going to do a deep dive into color theory here. So I encourage you to turn off your phone, make this moment about you, uh, give yourself the gift of focus and learning. Maybe, you know, grab your cup of coffee or tea if, you know, you like to cuddle something while you're learning, um, you know, grab a notebook to take some notes. Um, and that way we're just all present, we're all here, and we're all ready to like legit learn some color theory. Okay, so um, there is a workbook that goes along with today's class. Don't panic if you did not receive the link for the workbook. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up um, here. So you should see on your screen um, a color theory workbook under handouts if you go to the handouts tab to the right. Um, there's a PDF there that you can download. You can also go to the website listed on the screen if that's not working for you for any reason. And you will be able to download the color theory workbook from there. So definitely make sure you get the workbook. I want to make sure you get the most out of the training. Um, and there's some good information in there um, that you want to take some notes on. Okay. So I'll go ahead and leave that in your handout section. Um, and okay, and then questions for me. So, you know, as an art teacher myself, I will answer in time, in real time, the questions that are relevant to what we're talking about during this slide. But then at the very end, any of the other questions that you guys have, we will answer all the questions, okay? So don't hesitate to ask twice if it gets missed the first time. There are a lot of people in here and I'm gonna be selective about which questions I answer um, as I take you on this color theory learning journey. But at the end, uh, you'll you'll get a chance to ask again if, if I missed anything. Okay, and finally, if you find that you're learning a lot in this training or you wanna share it with anybody, like please share these links. Uh, this is not a secret. I'm trying to get this knowledge out there in the world. There's a lot of bad color theory knowledge out there and you know we can all do our part to, to correct the misinformation. So feel free to share um, anywhere you do your social media stuff. Okay, so hi everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see a lot of new faces. Um, for those of you who might not know me, my name is Mandy, and I am an artist and an art teacher. So I'm a licensed art teacher. I'm the former president of the Washington Art Education Association. I see a lot of Washington art teachers in here. Hello. And um, I'm also what's called an atelier trained artist. And I'm going to describe that a little bit later in the training and give you some more detail on that. But the, the quick little snippet of it is that atelier training is a way of drawing and painting realistically. And it's a specific kind of training that fell out of favor for like the last hundred years and is experiencing a renaissance now. So anything, if you've ever wanted to be able to draw or paint realistically or you know, want to have that technical art knowledge under your belt, um, definitely an atelier is what you're looking for. And we're going to talk about that um, more later on in the training. Okay, so as we start tiptoeing into our color theory situation, let me know if this sounds like you. Like you're really excited, you put all these colors on your palette, you're ready to go painting and you're mixing a color and you're like, oh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then you look down at your palette and everything is mud. <laughs> Does that happen to you? Like, feel free to let me know. Like that definitely happened to me a lot uh, when before I found atelier training, especially that happened a lot. Um, or, or maybe, um, you know, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, does it just not make sense? Like, do you see like this color wheel and this color wheel and this color wheel and this color wheel and this color wheel? And you're like, how, what, huh? Like this, you know, there's so many different things out there. What do they mean? And, you know, you start teaching or learning one way and then this other thing is, pops up and it feels like completely contradictory to the other thing that you were learning. Um, so that's also like a really common like pain point for people is like, what is going on with all of these color wheels? Or maybe this sounds like you. You are like, yes, this person's wearing a red shirt. I'm going to paint it red. It's going to be great. And then you get out your red paint and you're like, eh, it's not it's not the right red. How do I make the right red? Like, and I'll try to mix it with this or that. And then you end up back at the muddy mess problem again. Right. So like what's up with like not being able to make the right right so we're going to talk about all of these things um, in this training here 
Okay, so yay, color theory. It's the best thing that's like can possibly happen to you today. I'm certain of it. It's going to be a, a great hour together with all of you. Um, okay, I'm getting um, some messages saying that the sound is a little um, difficult. If you're experiencing um, sound difficulty, please let me know in the chat. Um, this is a new platform. I'm really excited because I'm able to share things directly with you, like the PDF download for the workbook and things like that. Um, so if you're having any difficulty, I recommend restarting your computer and rejoining. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so here's what's coming up. So even though we don't want a muddy mess on our palette when we're trying to make a not brown color, brown is our friend. And we're going to talk about why brown is so amazing when we can control it and when we understand it and when we know it. So that's something that we're going to learn today in our um, color theory workshop. Um, also, this might be news to some, it might be old hat to others, but white and black are not colors and they really are not. And we're going to talk about why they are not colors. So we're going to learn about that as well. And then finally, we're going to talk about what I call the chroma conundrum. So chroma is like the intensity of the color. So you have like, you know, red, and then you have like red, red, like stop sign red. So um, we're going to talk about the, the uh, chroma issues and why they can be so challenging and why they're so hard to mix. And um, sneak peek, some of them can't be mixed. So we're going to talk about why that is and what we can do about it. Okay, and we're also going to learn the truth about warm and cool colors. Um, so, you know, at least growing up and in my art teacher education, you know, what are the warm, cool colors? Like, you tell me in the chat, like, what are warm colors? You know, like what I was taught was like red, orange, yellow, those are warm colors. You know, um, what are cool colors? You know, green, blue, purple. These are lies. These are all lies and we're going to learn why they're lies and you'll never be duped again into falsely believing that uh, red, orange, yellow are warm colors and green, blue, purple are cool colors because that's not how it works and we're going to learn why. Okay. And the answer to that is like, I'm excited for that part. Okay, and then at the end today, I'm going to share with you. So this training is a part of a new product launch from the School of Atelier Arts. We just put together this extensive worksheet collection. And at the end, I'm going to uh, make that available to you with a special bonus. So um, keep an eye out for that at the very end of our color training. <laughs> Yay, I'm excited too, Becky. Um, and there's a double bonus. So um, those of you uh, who, uh, you know, come to the live training and, and are here today, not only with the regular color sheets, um, the worksheets, but if you stay to the very end, you get this extra 10 worksheets at no extra cost. They're like a double bonus. So um, you definitely want to stick around to the end, A, because you're going to learn a ton about color theory, and B, because if you stay to the end and you learn about color theory that much, you're going to want your hands on these. So. <laughs> and people are like super excited about the bonus like who doesn't love like the bonus you know like a little extra joy in your day <laughs> all right I'm, I'm getting lots of nice fun comments here in the chat um okay so let's talk about color theory like why is it so confusing it does not have to be so confusing um you know i've been there and part of the problem is that like you know, color theory is confusing because people have organized colors in their own way with lots of different systems and no one, I mean, there've been some attempts at standardizing color, uh, you know, Munsell comes to mind um, for those of you who are like super geeky about color, but each system has its limitations. And so what we really need is a set of vocabulary that embraces all of these systems, like these overarching ideas if we can all agree on the overarching ideas, then we can get really, really specific in our color knowledge. And we're going to talk about that. OK, so I wanted to show you some of my own artwork before and after I learned color theory. All right. So this is my before. And, you know, it was like a little more illustrative. But when I talk about like the muddy mess, if you look at like the cheek there, 
right? It's a muddy mess. That's not the color I was trying to mix. I would just, I didn't know what I was trying to achieve. I didn't have a clear color goal in mind when I was mixing this color. And, you know, it kind of creates this chalky, muddy skin tone, which is not what I wanted. I wanted this drawing to be the most realistic. And, you know, at the time I was the proudest. This was my best painting I'd ever made and the most realistic painting I'd ever made, the closest likeness to a portrait I had ever made. And so I was really proud of it, but it was nagging at me like, OK, it was the best I ever done, but it's not what I had in my head. Right. And my goal with Atelier training and with these trainings and with the School of Atelier Arts is to always make sure that you are able to create the artwork that's in your head and in your heart without compromise. I don't believe that you should just have to settle for Ugh, that's good enough. Right. There's technical knowledge out there and you can access it in ateliers. You can access it through the School of Atelier Arts. You can access it through you know, the resources that are available that teach atelier training. OK, so then that was my before. Then I found atelier training. And this is actually me studying in an atelier in Seattle. And the way atelier training works is that you basically you have to find somebody who already has this knowledge. And unfortunately, there are not a lot of atelier people at universities. Uh, ateliers have survived largely outside of universities. Um, and so they can be challenging to find. But you, if you really want to master realistic drawing and painting training, you have to go to an atelier or you have to learn or train with somebody who is atelier trained. Now, lucky for all of you here today, I am atelier trained. I've spent more than five years full time study in ateliers and another, you know, additional few years working with artists in ateliers all over the country. So, um, you know, it's uh, definitely, uh, you know, you're getting this atelier knowledge. Now, basically, atelier knowledge is just the collected body of technical knowledge in art, right? So you think of science as being like, oh, there's the Pythagorean theorem, and then we use like Arabic numerals, and like all this information got collected over time and put together. And that's essentially what atelier training is when it comes to the technical aspects of art. It's been handed down for generation to generation. Um, and something that's really interesting, I think, is so this atelier that I attended was with Julia Aristides in Seattle, um, who, uh, you know, who trained with people, who trained with people, who trained with people, um, all the way back to Jack Louis David. So actually, by working with me today, you could, if you were stretching it a little bit, claim that you've learned some artistic knowledge that stretches all the way back to Jack Louis David in Paris and um, a few centuries ago. So um, if you wanted like to feel good about yourself today, like take that. <laughs> okay. So this is the after atelier training, okay? So we saw the before with like kind of the muddy skin tones and the lack of clarity and form, um, the lack of realism, the lack of believability, and then you see the after, right? So this is what understanding color theory can do for you. And it's not just understanding color theory, like almost anybody can sit down with me for an hour today, like you are and understand the concepts that I'm going to be teaching you today. But to get to this level, I don't want to pretend that, oh, you can take this one hour workshop and then your art will go from my before to my after. That's not how it works. Um, but what I'm, you will get out of this today is you will have a path forward to practice and study color in a nuanced way that if you continue to put in that training hours with the knowledge I'm giving you today, that you will see massive improvements in your color work. All right. So, yay, color theory. Time to kind of get into the nitty gritty of, of what we're all here for. So we kind of had an overview. You know, we talked about what it is, what it isn't. And now to answer some of those um, good questions that we had at the beginning of the presentation. Oh, I see uh, somebody's recognizing one of our models uh, from that painting uh, that also trained at an atelier or worked at the school there. That's great. Um, so. We, we need a color theory system. You need to have a process that works for you every time when you go to sit down with your palette and you're trying to make a color. And you know, I work mostly in oils, so I'm gonna talk about oil painting, but it doesn't matter if you're working in oils or crayons or uh, watercolor or whatever your medium is. Anytime you're trying to create a color, you need to be thoughtful about the color. You need to be able to break the color down into pieces and then combine that knowledge back together to create a greater understanding for yourself and for your artwork. So what is the system? 
So we know if we want to make orange, we're going to take red and yellow. All right. So that's some pretty basic color theory. Let me know if I've lost anybody yet. <laughs> All right. All right. So this is what we know. Um, but we can't just mix any orange and get what we want. Like, what about this orange or this orange or, you know, the one on the bottom right there? Um, so what what's up with that? Like, if I mix the same amount of red and the same amount of yellow, I'm going to get one kind of orange, but I can't just mix one kind of orange and paint this image of an orange. There's lots of different oranges in there. And then it's like, well, how do I get to the right orange? All right. So, you know, we can't just take this formula of red plus yellow equals orange, like it's a functioning formula kind of, but if we understand the key elements of color, we'll, we'll be able to go much further and much deeper into color theory. Okay, so what is the system that I keep talking about? <laughs> All right, there are three elements to color. You heard it here, folks, three elements of color. There's value, there's chroma, and there's hue. And we're going to talk about each of those elements separately. And then we're going to talk about how they work together as a system. So um, for value, we have light and it goes all the way to dark. Um, different people use different scales. I'm sure like, like color wheels, there's a bajillion different value scales, but essentially it's a scale with equal steps of change between a very light value and a very dark value, and we call that a value scale, right? Now, colors can be light or dark, as we know, and we're going to answer one of those key questions now that I introduced at the beginning of the lesson. Whites are not their own color. White is not a color. What whites are, are colors like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, that are very, very light in value. Right. So if you've ever uh, heard an interior decorator like in the Home Depot aisle be like, oh, no, that white is way too warm. We need a cool white. We need a nice cold white or I want a warmer white or whatever they're saying there. They don't actually mean white. What they're saying is that I want a really, really light value yellow, a warm color, like a warm feeling right to that white that they're calling white. Right. Or if they were looking for a cool white that's really just a very, very light value blue, right? It's just that often the intensity of the color is so light, there's so little of the color in there that we tend to think of it as its own color. We tend to think of it as white, but white itself is not a color. And if you can get that out of your head, if you can stop thinking that white is a color and instead thinking of it as a very light yellow, a very light purple, a very light orange, your color work just from that will improve drastically, all right? So if you see what you formerly thought of as white, <laughs> instead of thinking of it as white, think of it as you really, really light red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, all right? So that's the, that's the reality with whites. Now let's talk about the opposite, all right? So black, there's no such thing as black either. Uh, can anybody guess? Anybody want to take a stab in the chat here that uh, what black is, having just learned about white? <laughs> I'm seeing some good answers. Um, so black is just a really, really dark red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And the best way to teach this to your students, or if you don't believe me, the best way to like prove it to you is if you take a black magic marker and then throw some water on it. What happens? The colors run, right? So a black marker will run like purple or red often. And what that's telling you is that as the ink of that black marker uh, gets diluted, as the pigment starts separating, it becomes lighter in value and the true color of it becomes known. All right. So if you want to do the magic marker test, to, to see what color black you actually have because they're not all the same. Some will run blue, some will run red, some will run purple, right? But they're all colors. They're just very, very dark colors, okay? So um, that's the key with black. All right, 
So actually, before we go on to Brown, are there any pressing questions about why white and black are not colors and how we should think of white and black? <laughs> so the next time you see a black, especially if you've ever tried to like go shopping and you like, let's say you have a goth aesthetic and you have some black pants and you want a black shirt to match it. And then all of a sudden the black pants look blue, right? It's the relationship between the shirt and the pants that you have two different roots of black. One is probably a very dark red and the other is probably a very dark blue. And they both look black to you separately, but when you put them close enough together, you can see that there's a shift in the, the color because it's not black, it's a dark red, it's a dark blue, it's a dark purple usually. Okay. All right, so why, let's go on to like the next, Big color question. I get this asked all the time. Like people write me emails about, about brown probably more than any other topic that the School of Atelier Arts receives. <laughs> like that's how confusing brown is as a color. And that's how um, important it is that we get this like color system and this color knowledge out there in the world. Um, so why isn't brown on the color wheel? So I see a few good guesses in the chat and a lot of partially correct answers in the chat. So that's good. I see some um, knowledgeable uh, folks in here. Um, but don't worry if you don't know, like it's fine. We, no one would be in here if they were like, I know everything about color, <laughs> right? Like we're all here to learn. Um, so why isn't brown on the color wheel? All right, I'm being very mean to you right now because the truth is that brown is on the color wheel. You just have to know where to look for it. So does anybody have a guess as to where brown is on the color wheel? Hmm, yep, yeah, maybe. I'm seeing a few a few good guesses here. Ah, yes, Delida, yes. Um, okay. Excellent. Oh, some people are so close. You're just so close, but just a little bit too far. Okay, so here's the thing. Brown is actually orange. Brown is orange, but it's an orange that's not the most intense orange. It's not the orange that we see, uh, that, that fruit that we saw earlier, that orange fruit. It's not that kind of orangey, orange, orange, right? It's what we call a neutralized orange. So we're talking about the chroma or the intensity of the color. So the color is still orange. It's just that it's a neutralized orange. It's not the most intense orange. In fact, brown is often really, really close to neutral, which is why we don't often identify it as being orange. All right, so it's a low chroma orange. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I see some like, oh, oh, in the chat, yes. <laughs> Yes, so I hope everybody has a moment like that at least once in, in this color theory training. Like, aha, that makes sense now. Finally, I get this. Okay, so, you know, we did ask some good questions at the beginning, so I hope I'm delivering here for you and giving you some good answers. All right, so we're really on the topic of chroma now, right? So we said that there's three elements of color. We talked about the value, how white is a really light value color and black is really just a really dark value color. The chroma is the intensity. That's what we're talking about when we say brown is orange, right? It's just a very low intensity orange. The chroma is not very strong in brown, but it's still an orange, right? But let's talk about the opposite of that, all right? So brown is very neutralized. Let's talk about highly, highly chromatic stuff, right? So um, why, why is it red? Red is such a pain to mix, but why? Why is it such a problem color? Part of it is because it's so intense. And part of it is that it's a darker value than the other colors. So think about yellow. Yellow is a very light value. Um, so uh, it's a little easier to see what color you're working with when it's you know, a little bit lighter, but reds can be quite dark. And as we learned from the black magic marker, when things get too dark, all of a sudden it's hard to see what the true color is. So that's really part of the challenge with red is that the value is darker than a lot of the other colors, but it still feels bright to us. So like, how do we cope with this? Okay, so let's look at our orange again. So this orange is super chromatic. If we wanted to sit down and paint this orange, we'd be pulling out the most chromatic paint we can find, all right? <laughs> so 
here's the thing. If I wanted to mix orange on my palette, oh, I want to paint this orange. Let's mix orange on this palette. There's a big problem. And that is, well, there's lots of big problems with that. But one of the problems is that anytime you mix two colors together, it slightly neutralizes them. So that means if I take red paint and yellow paint to make an orange color, or I take orange, uh, the brightest orange I can find right out of the tube, the, the tube is always going to be brighter. When you mix colors, they're always going to neutralize. And a great way to figure this out or to test this, like let's say you're like, Mandy, I'm calling BS on this. Like, I don't believe you. <laughs> There's a great little test you can do. Uh, get a tube of orange paint, red paint, and yellow paint. Mix your red and yellow together and then put the orange paint down next to it and say, tell me which one's brighter. It's, we often think when we mix red and yellow, oh, that's such a bright orange until we see it in comparison to something that's even brighter, right? All right, so that's one of the problems with, with chroma, with chromatic colors, is that when we mix uh, an orange or a green or a purple, purple's the worst culprit. Has anybody here ever tried to mix purple and it just looked like gray? It was so neutral, <laughs> right? Um, it's because when you mix the colors, it neutralizes them. All right. So, um, and we don't have time to go into the nitty gritty of that. It has to do with the way they grind pigment and the particle shapes and how they lock together, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's not for tonight, but uh, that's that's the little snippet of why that happens. But the other problem is that, you know, let's say I'm working with the middle orange there. That's a pretty bright orange. And I want to make the orange that is more yellowy, right? So probably I should add yellow to it. But what happens if I mix two colors? It's going to start neutralizing them, right? So how do I get that yellow orange to be as chromatic as this other orange that I started with? And the answer is you cannot mix that color. You cannot mix any colors to be more chromatic than what you start with because they will always neutralize. So if you really want to paint this orange and maintain the chroma, what you really need is a tube of like, cadmium orange and also a tube of cadmium yellow orange and also a tube of cadmium yellow yellow orange you know you are you following me because if you mix yellow into your regular orange and your goal is to maintain the chroma it's going to neutralize your paint all right and you don't want that if you're if your goal if your artistic vision is i want to make this orange as chromatic as the way i'm seeing it in nature then you need like three tubes of orange paint to do that. All right. Otherwise you're going to neutralize your colors. Okay. I, I think I like really covered that. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Becky is saying, ah, yes, I just have to have more paint. Thank you for the excuse. You're welcome, Becky. I gotcha. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So we talked about value how light and dark a color is and how white and black are not actually colors. They're just really light or dark value, um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. We talked about chroma. We talked about how brown is just a neutralized orange. And we also talked about how um, if you want to paint something really chromatic, you can't mix paints to be more chromatic than what you start with. So if your goal is to paint something really chromatic, you got to have the paint tubes. Um, and even then, like this sweater I'm wearing, I wore this on purpose. You cannot get a paint this chromatic. The, the um, dyes for clothing are more chromatic than we currently have the science to make pigment of paint, right? So um, know that depending on your medium, like if you're working in textiles, you can get more chromatic. And if you're working in oil paint, you can get the most chromatic oil paints there are, but they're going to be less chromatic than textiles. Um, Okay, I keep going on tangents here, but we have so much to cover. And so I really need to um, redirect here. And if anybody has any questions about that or anything, like if there's anything that I'm covering in this very compacted time slot, I, we only have an hour to talk about colors, not enough. Um, you can always write to help at School of Atelier Arts and you know I, I will answer those questions as best I can for you there. Okay, so the hue, is just often interchanged for color. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, right? So Roy G. Biv, anybody hear that before? 
Um, okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of us, like, this is one thing that like most people have agreed on and is actually the good information out there, at least to this step. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Glenda. Um, yeah, I, I felt that way too. Glenda's saying that she thought she knew quite a bit about color and boy, was I ever wrong. I felt that way too. I was teaching as an art teacher for many years in a classroom the wrong stuff. I like until I found atelier training, I didn't know of this. Like, how would I? No one, there's very few people in the world that have atelier knowledge. So how could you have possibly come across it um, if unless you were specifically seeking it? And how do you know it exists until you know it exists, right? That's um, but the cool thing is that atelier training is just like making this huge comeback right now. Um, and it with the internet and everything else and so many great atelier artists like putting their knowledge out there, there's so much good information that you can get now. Um, okay, so the hues, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. You know, I kind of teased it earlier when I was like, red, orange, yellow are not warm colors and I'm gonna tell you why, all right? So here's the thing about hues, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Every hue is both warm and cool. It's just a way to describe what you're comparing it to. So for example, this orange, this yellowy orange, you could say that that's a warm yellow, or you could say that's a cold orange. Both of those things are true. The only thing that makes it warm or cool is what you're relating it to. So that middle green, it's a cold yellow or a warm green. It's both of those things. All right. So every color is both warm and cool. Right? That's really key. That's very, very important. Because if you have it in your head that these are the warm colors, and these are the cool colors, you're going to miss the nuance of color. Um, like a lemon yellow versus a cadmium, you know, uh, medium. All right. If you look at them, you could say with certainty, lemon yellow is a yellow and this cadmium medium is a yellow but you put them next to each other, now you need a different way to describe them. You can't just call them both yellow. Uh, how do I know which one that you want, right? So you might say, hand me the cold yellow. And because I have two in my hand that you can compare side by side, I know which one to hand you. So it's about communication and clarity. And the more words we have to describe color and the more tools we have for describing them in more and more specific ways, the greater our ability to mix the colors that we intend to mix, all right? So that's the big takeaway with the warm and cool situation. <laughs> uh, Janet's saying, now I know I why I was so confused about warm and cool. Yeah, like me too. <laughs> like I, I feel you guys, like I feel the pain with, with this because you know, I learned very differently from this, but that wasn't the truth or the reality. And it's so much clearer now, like everything makes sense when you have access to good technical knowledge, which is what atelier training is. Okay, anybody like, how do I do this better? I wanna mix better colors, please. Please, please, over here. I want more of this knowledge that you're spouting at me, Mandy. Um, because you have, oh, I'm seeing all sorts of, yes, I want this. All right, so on one hand, I've taught you everything you need to know in this hour to be better at color. But what you need is a nuanced, intentional way of practicing it. Because when you practice these three elements in a careful, thoughtful manner, your eye will start to see more colors than you can see right now. How many things out there can you say, yes, I will see more colors? <laughs> like, what is, what is, like, it's amazing. It's like a, it's being hit on the head with a talent fairy, right? Like, I want to see more colors. I hope you do too. I hope that's what piqued your interest to, to be in here. Um, but it's not just knowing the system. That's a big, huge first step. If you do nothing but look at colors for the rest of the night and say, like, here's my phone case, like, oh, is it brown or is it a neutralized orange, <laughs> right? What's the value? All right. So it's a pretty neutral orange. That's you know, the chroma versus neutral. The value is very dark, right? And the hue is orange, chroma value hue. If you do nothing, if, if you take away nothing from this workshop, except look at colors and try to identify value chroma hue, you will improve your color vision a thousand percent, right? But you can do even better than that. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about. So option number one is you can just 
like do what you've been doing until you came into this workshop, right? You can be like getting random piecemealed information that may or may not be true because there's a lot of bad information out there, as we all know. <laughs> Some of it coming from people like me who are art teachers, right? Before I got my atelier training, teaching the wrong information and, and you know, being a part of the problem. Um, you know, so that's option number one is you can just continue figuring it out on your own, taking these meal information, you know, take what you learned today, got, you know, take it out there, uh, do your best. Um, or option number two is this process that I showed you today, right? Think about your value, your chroma and your hue. All right. But if you really want to be efficient in your learning, if you really want to master these concepts that I've introduced you to, that's what we're doing with these worksheets. This is why I made them. This is why I released them because I work with students all over the country. I work with art teachers all over the country who are in need of a, a learning tool. So, you know, I go and give them this lecture and they're like, yeah, that makes so much sense, but they aren't able to practice it in a nuanced way because really to see color better, you need someone at your side helping you and correcting you when you see it wrong because you know, if you guess that this is a value nine and it's really a value five, it's not going to help you unless someone's correcting you. So what these worksheets do is they take you through dozens and dozens of exercises of, you know, what is this purple or what is this color? And then it has the answer key, which is like having an atelier trained person over your shoulder helping you see better. <laughs> OK, so you make your best guess. You see the answer key. You're like, huh are you sure and then the next time you do it you go on to the next exercise you get a little bit closer you get a little bit closer because you have that person over your shoulder in the form of the answer key to help you practice seeing colors and it is a skill that requires development it's a skill that requires practice if you want to be really good at it um okay i see some of you are having some technical issues don't panic there will be a replay um and I'll, it'll get sent out after tonight's class all right so no panicking <laughs> okay so if you're interested in these worksheets i'm going to um oh do, 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 do. all right so i'm going to put up a little button um so again if you um, want to purchase these worksheets if you're ready to practice on your color theory um, you can use this link um, to do so. Um, and I'll also show you um, some of these other things. And if you need to close that um, pop-up I just put up there, there's a little button on the side that you can do it. Okay, so um, these worksheets, I'm just going to show you a few examples of how they help you practice in a nuanced way. <laughs> your colors. So, you know, there are a lot of worksheets on taking just one color at a time and taking one element at a time, right? So in this case, we're talking about purples and we're talking about value, right? So this is one of the early worksheets. It's to kind of ease you into it. It's not so scary. It's not so intimidating, but uh, like any good art teacher, I of course scaffold the lessons as we go throughout the worksheets, right? So this is an early lesson, pretty approachable. Um, to get you started and to get you to start thinking about how value and color looks. Because if you look at letter D there, um, maybe some of us would have said that that was black before, right? But we know that black is not a color. It has to be a very, very dark value of something. In this case, a very dark value of purple, all right? So all these concepts, um, you know, build on each other's scaffold throughout the lessons. Okay. And then we talk about chroma. And again, the chroma section in these worksheets starts a little easier. It's just asking you to look at these colors and see if you can identify which hue they are. So they're all neutralized hues and you have to figure out which one. And so, you know, the first set of worksheets are a little bit easier to identify and then they get a little bit harder and a little bit harder as you start practicing your seeing and as you start checking your work again with that answer key, which is your best friend if you really want to master color theory. Okay, and then talking about warms and cools. So practicing seeing the relationship of colors that are really close to each other and differentiating them, right? So before we might've said, this is an orange and this is an orange and this is an orange, but now we're practicing seeing how the oranges relate to each other, all right? Uh, with the warm and the cool, using that warm, cool vocabulary to better understand the relationships of colors 
And again, they get closer and closer to like the, the worksheets get harder as you go. They get more nuanced and more challenging as you go because I want you to start with an approachable way, get you know a good feeling under your belt, check them with the answer key, and then level up and level up, right? Oh, here's a great question. Um, any advice for colorblind art teachers? And this is also true for colorblind students. Um, and in fact, uh, if you struggle to teach color theory to a certain student, please keep in mind that there are especially um, there's something on the genes of men or boys that uh, is it, more prominent to be colorblind and partially colorblind. In fact, a lot of men are colorblind a little bit and don't know it. Um, because it's a subtle thing. So if you have a student that's struggling um, with colorblindness or that you suspect might be <laughs> colorblind, there are um, these like little cards you can show them that will determine how much of the red green they might be colorblind because that's usually what it is. Um, but also just focus on the value worksheets, right? It's a huge advantage to colorblind students to see value because full, people that see full colors they get distracted by how intense the color is and think it's lighter than it actually is. Like that yellow on the color wheel in front of you right now, um, it's not a one. A lot of people would say, oh, it's so bright, right? But look how much darker it is in the paper. And it's because the chroma is tricking our eyes to think that it's lighter than it really is. But colorblind students, they get it right all the time. They're brilliant at values, absolutely brilliant. So if you're a colorblind person yourself or if you work with students that are colorblind, um, you actually have a real gift. Um, maybe consider working in grisaille, which means painting in one, one color, but you know, using the full value range within one color. Um, I, I've seen a lot of work, even historically, um, that uh, you know, there's certain artists that are were probably red green colorblind in history that were fabulous painters. And if you want to write me at School of Atelier Arts, uh, help at schoolofatelierarts.com, I can send you a list of those. Good questions. OK, so these worksheets, I think I've said it all. They help you learn color theory. There's more than 50 of them. And there's actually more than 50 of them because there's the bonus worksheets also. So there's like these 10 bonus worksheets as well. Um, so what's the investment? So the cost is $34. So normally, the price is $49. But because we are launching these worksheets, these are brand new. They only uh, went into our store. Um, just this week. So um, because they're new, we always offer a really good price on our new products. So it's $34, but only until Friday, <laughs> and then it goes back up to $50. So um, keep that in mind. And then also because you're in this amazing, wonderful color theory webinar and that I love to reward color theory geeks <laughs> like you because you're here, um, there's also these uh, bonus worksheets. So you're actually getting 60 plus worksheets. Um, this week. Okay, so it's the worksheets, it's the bonus worksheets. If you want to purchase them, again, um, there's that little pop up on the bottom left of your screen. Um, you can also um, use this web address here. You want to use this web address because this gives you the bonus, um, or the pop up screen will give you the bonus. Um, but if you just go directly to the store, it'll charge you regular price. So you want to use this link. When you get there, um, this screen will show up with a big yellow button. And if you click the button, um, it will take you um, with the discount and the bonus uh, into the store. Excellent. I see a lot of people here can have already purchased them. That's awesome. Um, so um, good question. Can we print the worksheets with students? Yes, you can. They are color worksheets, um, so that can be pricey depending on your district. Some of you might have some swank school districts. Um, but what I recommend doing actually is just putting it up on the board. It makes a great do now to just do one worksheet, you know, in the morning or, you know, first thing when they come into class. Um, and then, you know, you can go through the answer key you know, for that one page that day. Um, and that way everybody's seeing the same color because when you do print, sometimes there's variations. I do address that in the answer key. Um, so please know that every screen, every printer is gonna have a little bit of variation. So within the answer key, it says very clearly that if you are absolutely certain that something is off, um, it's gonna be consistently off throughout the whole thing, right? And so um, that's probably a color screen issue. I did um, test these on a variety of different screens uh, and picked um, colors that were pretty universal despite the discrepancy in the, the screens. So I did address that as best I can, but that is definitely a concern um, 
and to be aware of. Um, so like maybe your printer prints them really light. Well, all your values are probably gonna be one lighter than the answer key, right? So, uh, but the relationship between all the answers should stay the same, whether it gets light or dark, or maybe your printer prints really red or really green. Um, so in whatever way it's slightly off, it'll be consistently off. So at least you'll be able to understand uh, and still learn the color. <laughs> oh, uh, so someone's saying you should do more of these sessions. Um, thank you. Your explaining is amazing. You're gonna make me. You're gonna make me blush the same color as my my shirt there. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there's one day that I uh, taught this particular person to add red to the green, and yeah, because it neutralizes it if you add a little bit of red to your green. Um, but that's a whole another hour long workshop. So we're, we're going, uh, we're almost out of time. And I did promise um, a robust question and answer uh, opportunity. So I'm going to give the last 10 minutes um, over to questions from the chat. So if there was anything that you were like, I don't think that could possibly true, Mandy, be true, Mandy, can you like explain a little bit more? Or if you're like, huh, what about this color? Why, where does it go? Or why is it confusing me? Um, this, this is a great time um, for those types of questions. Oh, um, so Jean's asking, is there specific paint colors that are listed to use with the worksheets? Uh, no, they're not. And the worksheets are largely, you don't have to paint. You can get so much mileage out of these worksheets because they're all designed with the colors there already. So you don't necessarily have to be mixing colors to match, but Matching each and every one of those colors on those worksheets would be a brilliant way to master your color, right? So they're versatile. They're there, um, you know, to differentiate between your levels too. Um, and there's so many of the worksheets. If you have a colorblind student, give them the value worksheets. If you have a student that's like really crushing, you know, color theory, maybe have them mix paint colors to match them. But um, I don't offer a specific list of paint tubes because I'm hoping by the time you finish these worksheets, you know what you need to mix the colors. <laughs> Um, there because you have a thorough understanding of value chroma hue. You know that you can't make something more intense than the paint that you do have, those types of things. So um, that's my goal for all of you. Oh, this is a great question. So what's the optimum number of tubes on a palette? Well, it depends what you want to paint. I actually am a big floral painter. They're very, very chromatic. And because you can't make a more chromatic paint than what you already have, I have like 15 different tubes of like pinks and oranges, right? Especially uh, those colors, because if you want that like punchy chroma note as you're seeing it in nature, um, you need that. And even still, most flowers, if you think of a hot pink geranium, it's more chromatic than any pigment that exists in oil paint right now, right? So if you want to get that feel of that like really chromatic hot pink geranium, you have to purposely subdue the colors around it. And that way you still get the relationship of the intensity of that hot pink chroma to what it's next to, even though you're purposely exaggerating the neutrality of what it's next to so that that hot pink feels like super hot. Um, so the worksheets are online. They're a digital product. They're delivered digitally to you. You have the files forever. <laughs> um, so uh, that's all there for you uh, as well. And then also this uh, training will be sent to everybody that's been registered here. You'll get a recording of it. So um, that recording will only be up for a couple days, but it will be there for you. <laughs> Melissa says, can I put you in my pocket when I paint? Thank you, Melissa. That's very sweet. <laughs> Um, uh, so yes, Julie's asking, will the handouts be appropriate for elementary? Absolutely. My biggest beef in art education right now is that the technical knowledge that students are able to learn is much greater at a much younger age than I believe the profession is acknowledging right now. So in my experience, I have, I will teach any atelier skill that I teach to an adult to second grade. In my experience, second grade is when they're able to start abstracting with their eyes and really start tackling skills. They're a little clumsy. They don't quite have the fine motor skills, but they understand the concepts and they can execute way beyond what we're challenging them to do right now. You know, like I saw a lesson plan the other day for second grade that was like, make shapes in the air with your finger. And uh, I don't want to diminish um, what other people are doing, but I know for certain that much of the information in those worksheets uh, that younger groups can manage and understand, especially the value ones. I feel like that's a really, I started the whole worksheet set with the value because I feel like that's the easiest concept 
of the three to get into. But if you go with the assumption that, of course, these are age appropriate, then the students will learn it, in my opinion. Um, and in my experience of teaching atelier skills specifically to elementary, I would say second grade. Um, oh, favorite brand of paint. Um, I, I don't stick to any one brand of paint because I paint really chromatic, right? So I need, I paint flowers, I need a lot of range. And so that means that I need this brand's hot pink and this brand's hot pink. Now that being said, do, if you're painting in oils, do not cheap out on your paint. No student brand paint. There's so much filler in those paints. It, it, you're not gonna be able to learn color theory with, with all that stuff. Now, those of you teaching in classroom, I recognize that our budgets are limited. We do the best with what we have, but you're never gonna hit any of those chroma notes with that tempera paint, <laughs> that scholastic tempera paint or whatever it is. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say a specific brand, but um, whatever it is, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. So basically the increased cost is because the density of the pigment is higher. And ideally you want oil paint that is just oil and pigment. What you want to avoid is oil plus pigment plus the special spreader to make the expensive pigment spread out more so that they can sell it cheaper, right? Um, um, okay, so someone's asking about the MA in Studio Arts program. Um, we'll, I was gonna do a webinar for that um, separately, so we'll, we'll shelve that for that. But if anybody does have questions for um, the master's degree that is atelier based in partnership with the Florence Academy of Art in Florence, Italy, um, feel free to write me at help at School of Atelier Arts and I can send you the info. Amazing. Okay, so um, so the MA degree, it has both in-person and remote options, but the third year, it's terrible. You have to go to Italy for your third summer. So <laughs> it's three summers. Uh, you do two either online or in-person in Jersey City, just outside of New York City. And then the third summer, you have to go train in the most amazing, beautiful campus you've ever seen in Florence, Italy. <laughs> Somebody's like, yeah, that's a bummer. Like, I know, I feel you. Oh, very good. Okay, so I know there's like a little bit of a lag here. So I, I'm gonna stay on for a few more minutes because some people are just now getting to the end and I wanna make sure I'm able to answer their questions. Oh, um, so somebody's asking, can you um, repeat why blue isn't cool and orange isn't warm? It's because every color is both a warm and cool. So if you have like a yellowy blue versus a purpley blue, so um, you know, the purpley blue would be considered warmer, the yellowy blue would be considered cooler, right? So they're both blues. So, but if I just said, oh, blues are always cool, then that's not going to help me identify between the two blues. And the same is true with orange. Like if I have a yellowy orange and a red orange, right? The yellowy orange is cooler and the redder orange is warmer. But if I just say, oh, this is orange is warm and this orange is warm, how does that help me differentiate between the two oranges? Oh, thank you all. I'm so glad that um, you found it. Uh, you, I mean, you guys are all giving up your time, especially the teachers. I want to give a special shout out to the teachers who just taught a full school day and are here on professional development. Like, super kudos to you. Um, thank you. I'm I'm so happy that um, this was helpful to so many of you. I'm like overwhelmed by the kind words in the chat right now. Thank you. Um, I'm glad I decided to kind of get back in online teaching. You know, I did it a little bit during quarantine and then took a break, but uh, this software in particular has really helped me um, streamline the process. So I uh, look forward to some doing some more of these in the future. <laughs> more Mandy webinars, thanks. <laughs> Hashtag, make sure to post about it uh, to your friends. Again, the um, replay will be available for a while. So uh, make sure to share and, let, let's get good color information out there in the world, all right? Um, <laughs> we can do it. Uh, yes, uh, so you can follow me on Insta. My personal Insta is at Mandy Fine Artist, and the School of Atelier Arts Insta is at School of Atelier Arts. So um, please do uh, follow along with us. We also, um, some of you might not know, we have a special Facebook group for art teachers that are interested in atelier training. It's called Atelier Art Teachers. So. Um, you can just put that in the search in Facebook. And if for any reason you can't find it, just write me at help at School of Atelier Arts and I can send you the link. All right. 
Um, oh, so another great question. So somebody's asking if I'm going to be at the art teacher conference, the NAEA. Um, I'm not going this year, um, unfortunately, but I hope to um, be be back in future years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, uh, Cynthia, that you want, can't wait to try it with the kids. Um, you know, it's amazing. Kids love learning things that they can like apply immediately. And color theory is definitely, and I'm saying kids, but I really mean all the adults in the room. Like, I hope that each and every one of you is already like looking around being like, oh, what's the value chroma hue of that? What's the value chroma hue of that? <laughs> okay. All right, so um, we're almost out of time here. So I'm going to go ahead and wind down. If you think of anything that you're like, oh, why didn't I ask Mandy that when I had the chance? You can always write me, help at schoolofatelierarts.com. Um, I, I get lots of inquiries every day from people all over the world, just like you, and I love hearing from you. So, um, you know, let me know your thoughts too. Like, did you love it? Did you hate it? Um, is there a resource that you'd like to see? Is there a webinar that you would like me to do next, like on a particular topic? Um, I'm always open. You know, I kind of have a rule that if I get asked for something three times, I make it. So if you really want to see something, uh, ask. make sure to get your friends to ask too. <laughs> I think I'm going to regret saying that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get a flood of emails. <laughs> um, Oh, so there's a, a question about blue um, that's really relevant from Pam. Um, so ultramarine blue and then um, phthalo blue. So ultramarine blue has been around a lot longer than phthalo blue. Phthalo blue is considered a modern pigment. Um, ultramarine blue uh, has been around a fair amount longer. And um, the main problem with phthalo, in my opinion, is just that it's so potent. And a lot of these modern colors are. It, it's so potent that unless you have extraordinary like palette knife control when you're mixing your colors, uh, it's really easy to ruin things. Um, and also, you know, like flowers in nature have like a really chromatic like pink, like my sweater, but there aren't a ton of super chromatic blues out there with the exception of landscape painting. And I full, full um, disclosure, I do not landscape paint like I. My friends make me go out with them every now and then and we go landscape painting and like it's just not my jam i'm sorry it's just like you know but i know that landscape painters really love their phthalos so i can't speak to that but i can tell you in the world of painting portraiture and flowers that phthalo blue is not a pigment i i reach for often unless i'm painting a vase or something that's very blue Okay. All right. So thank you all very much. Again, if you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email. I'm here for you. I want to get this knowledge out in the world and I appreciate you taking the time to learn with us today. Take care, everybody.